So Rob, we're here today to talk about using an identity grid mm -hmm. and, and how that shows up for people in different kinds of workshops. So why don't you just set the stage for us? Sure. So in my work working in social justice education, I'm often invited um, to spend time with groups helping to normalize conversations about identity, um, engaging groups in a dialogic practice, and oftentimes that tends to be countercultural. There tends to be some level of fear, apprehension, worry about what that conversation might look like. And so the Identity Grid serves as a helpful tool to kind of invite those conversations in. And depending on the group, it varies in range of depth, depending on how comfortable, familiar, mm -hmm. how much trust there might be in a group, how much awareness um, there might um, be, and then just openness of dialogue and communication. Uh, I find it to be a useful tool to um, start to either broaden the conversation around identity, so thinking about the multiple identities in which we, we all hold, we tend to maybe be aware of a few of our identities. Uh, so things that are talked about broadly in society, at least U.S. society, are things like race and gender, um, maybe religion. But less often talked about are things like uh, sexual orientation or social class or ability and disability um, that might be um, lacking kind of external visibility, uh, at least on the surface. And so um, this tool allows uh, individuals to kind of take, take stock of the full breadth of um, their multiple identities and then start making meaning of, of kind of how those identities play out for them in practice. Um, either in their work setting or in a particular organization, uh, in a community, um, or just personally. Uh, so using it as a self-awareness tool can also be useful. And when you walk into these trainings, and you know, is, is, is the invitation in a primary goal? Are there other primary goals that you have with it associated with the learning that you want to achieve and those kinds of things? Yeah, so typically, um, I am using it as an awareness raising tool. Mm -hmm. So um, awareness of what are the identities that I hold, all right? And so sometimes um, some folks I engage have tons of awareness, right? So they can rattle off, you know, identify this and this and this and this, um, but oftentimes that's not the case. Yeah. And so um, it's a helpful exercise in contextualizing, well, what is social identity? What does that term mean? What are examples? What are types of social identities? And then kind of moving a group from, from that broad awareness to starting to think about, um, so then how does that identity play out, right? Mm -hmm. How does it experience uh, either agency, power, privilege? Uh, how might it be a majority or dominant within a particular society or context? Um, and then conversely, how might it experience marginalization, um, exploitation, tokenization? Um, within a particular context, society, or, or community. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes it's a mix of both, right, mm -hmm. depending on some, some nuances in the conversation. And then kind of once we um, can start to get the group to um, understand and then apply that onto their own experience, uh, we then tend to move to dialogue. So after they do that initial self-reflection, we then try to get groups, typically in small groups, um, thinking about safety and trust building. Uh, so groups of two or three or four to start to, ex uh, to communicate, like, here's what I'm bringing, right? Here's who I am. Here's um, identities that I hold, that I view the world through. Mm -hmm. How about you? Right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's overlapping experience where we can draw out patterns. Um, and then sometimes there's diverging experience where we can start to normalize that we're not all um, experiencing the world in the exact same mm -hmm. ways. Um, and in that conversation, there's a lot of richness um, yeah. for particularly starting to think about some nuances in experience um, mm -hmm. and how that then maps on to um, either the level of inclusion that might be playing out in an organization or community or the lack thereof. Mm -hmm. And for postdocs, I mean, what kinds of things would you think might be valuable for them to reflect on? Yeah. So I think in the, in the context of postdocs, there's um, many different contexts in which they're working, right? right? So in relation to folks on our research team, um, they might be thinking about um, their relationship to a PI or um, a researcher mm -hmm. um, across different hierarchies or power dynamics. And, and they could be 
um, someone who, you know, if I ask them, you know, do you belong? Do you feel like you fit in in this group or this community? They might say, oh, yeah. You know, I never really have to think about identity um, much at all. Mm -hmm. um, or conversely, that could say, no, you know, I, I feel pretty pretty isolated. Mm -hmm. um, or there's not many other international students. Or mm -hmm. there's not many um, other women you know, on our research team. Or um, I really feel that my lack of um, age and experience really plays a, a, a big role in my relationship with my PI, mm -hmm. for example. And, you know, and even within that context, I think, um, postdocs might have varying levels of depth of how that then gets internalized mm -hmm. um, within um, how they make meaning yeah, of it. Yeah. So, you know, it can be a, a useful reflection tool um, for postdocs. And then also to think about um, where do they hold responsibility? So just because you're not noticing or paying attention to any one given aspect of social identity doesn't mean that it's not important to pay attention to. And so it can be a, a helpful opportunity for them to start thinking about what am I not noticing? What am I not paying attention to? Um, and then what impact might that be causing mm -hmm. on those around me or even for, for me personally, mm -hmm. um, internally? Yeah, I would say from my personal experience, you know, the first time I used the tool a number of years ago, I think, you know, it made me stop and think when I'm projecting into a space, when I'm standing in front of a classroom, when I'm running a group meeting, when I'm doing those kinds of things, you know, what are the key issues of, of how I show up and what I think, uh, what I assume and know in some cases how other people are seeing me. Yeah. And so I think that that's a great thing. Yeah. So as we wrap up, what would you recommend in, in how a postdoc might share out in their reflection um, having done the grid? What, what might be words of advice? Yeah, I think there are some, um, some go-tos that I think are helpful points of reflection in, in sharing out. I think thinking about the notion of salience. So um, can I, at this point in time, in whatever context you're existing in, um, what identities have kind of bubbled up to the surface um, where you um, have either noticed them mm -hmm. um, to, to a certain level of frequency, and then to ask yourself a deeper question uh, in relation to what played out in your life or what learning did you go through to make that identity salient, noticeable, something that you pay attention to. Um, because within that response, there can be some immense learning about the ways in which um, folks experience marginali marginalization or how we can start to learn more about um, access to our identity that aren't quite as conscious for us. Um, so I think that's a, a really useful um, thing to share out and, and be in a process of reflection around. And then thinking about risk taking. Right. So uh, I think risk taking is an essential element in um, deepening um, our own reflections and critical consciousness. And so um, one of the things I'll often tell groups is uh, not to go um, off the ledge, right? So is you know we are not asking um, for reflections, for stories, for lived experiences that feel that they are pushing beyond a, bo a boundary. Um, but how can you think about what's comfortable for you? and push a little bit beyond that, right? To, to push into some risk taking, to dip your toe in the water, to um, say something that maybe you haven't vocalized or written down um, before. Uh, and I think it's in those moments that we tend to find community, mm -hmm. um, that we tend to find validation and affirmation or, or awakening, right? Yeah. Uh, and so when individuals have done some risk taking with me, I think mm -hmm. it's helped to normalize that I can be in that process and be in that type of relationship mm -hmm. um, with them. And at the same time, when I do that for myself, it helps me to um, peel back some of the layers of maybe shame or guilt that might be underlying my inability right, to, to fully name or acknowledge. And I think being able to move out of that place um, has helped to spark vulnerability mm -hmm. that has landed as empowerment for me mm -hmm. and empathy for others. And I yeah. think vulnerability and empathy are two transformative forces yeah. um, that we need more in our communities. Yeah, we definitely do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.